What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Dan, and today I'm joined by Craig on my left and Josh. Koma, hello. And Leah. And we've just gone to see the Black Panther movie. Um... <laughs> oh, yes. I was so hyped. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Black Panther, directed by Ryan Coogler. You may know some of his work, like Fruitvale Station and Creed. Um, I'd never heard it? of him before this film. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, no, I'd, right. I've obviously heard of Creed. Yeah. Um, which obviously also had Michael B. Jordan in it. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't know that it also worked with him for yeah. Fruitvale Station as well. Like, that's that's like a longer relationship than he had with yeah, John Storm. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, yeah, it's, and he did a good job. To yeah, be fair. and I th- you can you can see it's it's his work, but um, I mean, yeah, we'll get into it. We'll get into it in detail. But um, Black Panther is the 18th movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and sees T'Challa return home as the king of Wakanda after his father T'Chaka is killed during the events of Civil War. Uh, T'Challa finds his sovereignty challenged by a longtime adversary in a cl- in a conflict that has go- global consequences. That's a nice little uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, summary there, yeah. So, um, yeah, what, what did you guys, what did you think of Black Panther? I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hate black people? <laughs> <laughs> Do you hate Africa, Craig? Okay. What, what Tell the people. <laughs> it's like, it's amazing, it's brilliant. Like, how can you have a 95% cast of mm. all black people, like yeah. all of us? It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, you had, you had... Sorry, I'm not, not no, trying no, to yeah, cut you yeah. off or anything, but yeah, you did have like Chadwick Boseman, Michael B. Jordan, Lapita Nyong'o, mm. Daniel Kaluuya, mm. Danai mm. Guerrero, mm. Forrest Whitaker, Forrest Whitaker. Bassett, I mm. mean, Winston Duke, Sterling K. Brown, Martin Freeman, Sterling K. Brown, Andy Sarkis. Mean, it was just a big, it was a big star yeah. cast. There was like was so many cast. like accomplished black people there. I <laughs> thought there was going to be like shout outs to Oprah, just like all the way through it. <laughs> Mate, I'm, like what, Will Smith must have been on the phone like, can you not get me out of this death shot contract? Please, please. Oh my God, such a big <laughs> cast. It was, it was. <laughs> It was great, yeah. What are you? Uh, but you, but, but what? you, you on the fence with it? You what? I'm on the fence. I probably need like a second viewing. Okay. Or because you're you're planning to have a second viewing like today. Isn't it? So I'm gonna go and see it today, yeah, um, for a second time. I don't know. Maybe mm-hmm. I need to like, sink in. Okay. I don't know if I need. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna like see it again mm, just because yeah. I was so hyped for this film beforehand. I knew I was gonna like love it before, like even seeing it. I knew I was like, I need to see it two or three times or whatever. After coming out of it, um, after having literally just seen it, I, I do, I love it. I really love it. Yeah. I do really, really like the film. Um, it's prob my best film is probably still Avengers One. Okay. Yeah, I probably still like liking that one a bit more, and yeah. also I really loved um, Civil War, and then more recently. Uh, for Ragnarok as well. So not mm. to say that other films are like, you know, not good films. Yeah. It's still a great one, but yeah, it's not my top, top, top yeah. Marvel film. Okay. Yeah. So um, what, what did you like? What did you dislike? Oh, the action scenes. It's really like amazing. I liked when the went to the spiritual world. Mm. Um, all the bits with Sherry, I liked. <laughs> yeah, the, the technology and everything. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I did like um, that. What his sister? Uh, what Sherry's Sherry, name? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she was kind of like the James Bond Q kind of yeah. character, wasn't yeah. she? And yeah. like that kind of yeah, the tech sidekick. It's yeah. not really like obviously it's like a predominantly black cast. So it's not really like the image you'd have for that role necessarily. So she was mm. like young, like intelligent, yeah. Yeah. spunky. She had jokes. Yeah, she, yeah. Had, like, <laughs> she had put downs for like everything yeah. the child was going on about. So like she was yeah, she was like a great. Yeah. Great, great, great character. Yeah. Didn't really like her. Um, I really loved the bodyguard. I, yeah, she was one of my favorites. Yeah, well. she yeah. was great. Denai Guerrero. Denai Guerrero. Yeah, yeah, yeah the head of the, the yeah. general or whatever. Yeah. yeah, like ever since friggin' Civil War, where she was like, move, <laughs> or you'll be moved. <laughs> she's just like, she's just stolen the show yeah. from me. Like, yeah, yeah, she's strong, she's loyal, she's like powerful. She, um, she tries to keep T'Challa on like the right path. Mm. Uh, whenever she wants, like, she's just. Oh, <laughs> she was great at what she did. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what, I mean. what did you What did you think of it? Uh, yeah, no, I liked it a lot. You liked I it. I think. Um, why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> Yoshi slipped off. <laughs> what? <laughs> she you fell asleep. asleep. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't oh, know man. what happened. It was a bit <laughs> slow at one point, and then I just kind of. Which bit? 
<laughs> like when I was doing the just, flips, when I was scratching the cars out. <laughs> <laughs> when Michael B. Jordan in his badass hair was like flicking around the wind. <laughs> I think it was just before he, um, he, or just when he was going into the condo. I don't know what was happening, Ooh. but it was just a bit okay. slow. Uh-huh. But I was still knew what was happening. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was good. Hmm. I remember the bit where, um, uh, where they go to the casino. Mm. Um, and uh, so, like, you know, not going to go into, like, spoilers are too in-depth into the scene or whatever, but uh, where T'Challa first sees uh, Everett Ross um, is, like, involved in this, involved in the situation that's evolving. Mm. And um, uh, that little kind of back and forth, like, yeah, that was kind of one of the more tamer, like, less action-y orientated bits until, like, it kicks off a bit later on. Uh, but I remember, like, I really liked that scene because it was kind of, like, just... Um, T'Challa had, um, well, he's king. He's king of Wakanda at that point. Yeah. And he kind of like instated his kingly kind of prowess yeah. and like swagger. And he kind of like just uh, went up to um, Everett Ross. And Everett Ross was like, you know, whatever I am or I'm not doing, like, you know, um, I'm sorting the situation. Just don't get in my way. And then, T'Ch- uh, and then T'Challa's like, ah, oh, yes, but I'm taking him. So you've been warned. <laughs> like, and he kind of just, he kind of just, Entered the situation. You know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of, um, you ever seen Game of Thrones where like uh, Joffrey says something yeah. and then Tywin says something yeah. and you listen to Tywin. It's kind of like that. It was like the king has entered. I don't care what yeah. you are, I'm in state in what I yeah. do. This is my yeah. business sort of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's. Yeah, for me, it was like I was always hyped. I was always hyped for this movie. Um, but actually seeing it now, it's. It's interesting because it didn't remind me like I was watching a Marvel movie. Yeah. Exactly. Like most of most of the scenes, I don't know. I just I just kept seeing the Lion King. I don't know why. <laughs> I, just, I just kept seeing. I kept seeing. Ah, like, <laughs> it, it, it was like a live action Lion King with some Marvel bits thrown in. But like, yeah, it just it was like everything about it was was african and i think that's yeah. what that's what was so good about it, it was um and like you were mentioning the astral plane bit where yeah 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 exactly yeah <laughs> but it's in the sky it's um like obviously like wakanda's like a futuristic city but they've also managed to mesh in the sort of african culture to it and i think it's like it's one of those movies i think you don't get it a lot in superhero movie, movies should i say where like this movie was obviously about Black Panther, but it was also about Wakanda. It was about a nation. Yeah. And you don't yeah. really get that in a lot of movies. So you saw, you saw the people. It was more like the people and yeah. Black Panther. You saw the culture. Yeah. You saw like their traditions. A yeah. lot was like a big thing about it. Yeah. It's like each of the characters had their own. It felt like they had their own sort of weight to them. Like so. Yeah. Um, uh, Okoye, um, Nokia, Shuri. They, they all felt like they were had big roles to play yeah. in this whole movie, and that's not something you always see a lot in in comic book movies. So I appreciated that, and it, it made them the movie just feel like had a lot more depth to it. Yeah, not even just that; they're all kind of like real people that yeah. have like lived kind of like a life under the previous king or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And there were uh, there were like tribes as well that you know were kind of fighting and had come together and like what kind of warring and stuff you mm. felt that that had there was like a tangible past that had been lived and yeah. we were kind of like just dropping in on this one exactly like yeah. event in Wakanda or whatever mm. and I like that uh, uh, the role of vibranium how it's so entrenched in their culture like and like really entrenched as well there, there's like there's like what well, there's vibranium what the little uh, uh, hologram things yeah, that they got, yeah. like all the technology they got around it. I feel like there's like vibranium like plates, there's vibranium forks, there's vibranium <laughs> sippy cups. So you go to your vibranium kitchen, eat vibranium food, <laughs> wash it with a vibranium sponge. Or like it's like it, it's so everywhere and so like useful and tactile to their life, and all and kind of really. I mean, I'm gonna say logical, but like logic for a fantasy kind of film, yeah. like logical kind of ways that you can kind of like. Yeah, you can kind of suspend your disbelief and like yeah. fall into it. Was, it was, yeah, mm. it was really good. All right. So, I mean, what did you guys think <laughs> of Eric Killmonger as the villain? Manga? So, uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Um, I think, what do you think he should come back? Um, I mean... I was thinking this midway through the film, like, so... 
kind of, you know, I, I kind of trying to think of it in the context of all the MCU, right? So yeah. Avengers, the Avengers film had Loki as that main villain. So yeah. like they picked one villain out of one of the films or whatever. Mm. So for the next Infinity War or whatever, like, you know, we know it's Thanos is the big bad guy, but he's obviously going to have like, you know, some sort of sub boss somewhere in there. So who mm. should be that sub boss? And I was wondering, should, could, mm. yeah, Killmonger kind of fit in that role maybe? Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. he's a little bit limited in like yeah. his... Yeah. Um, I suppose, Scale. Yeah, yeah, I suppose I suppose Thanos has his Black Order, so they will be the the, main, the, the secondary. What about the ones on Earth? Yeah, Kermongo could have been set up as a proper like villain because he had black ops and stuff. Mm. Yeah, yeah he could have. Black market stuff and. Yeah. Like I said, I also think that whatever Killmonger can do, um, who was Doctor Strange's like best friend? Oh yes, uh, Mordo. Yeah, Mordo. Yeah. He can do better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you know, he's kind of like got the same resolve and like you know, kind of discipline training, yeah. like in a different type of way. But it's also got magic. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I feel I feel um, Killmonger was good. He was good as a villain. He was. I like Michael B. Jordan's I, portrayal of yeah, him. Yeah, I like his portrayal of him. I think he played that role with style. Yeah. Like, yeah. and I mean, I've said it a million times one before, not necessarily on camera, but that haircut. Oh my <laughs> gosh. The dreads down to the, oh, oh, I've never been so affected by something in my life. Oh, I want to be that cool. I want to be <laughs> that badass. Because yeah, he was like, oh, he, he was on another level yeah. with that. Yeah. Oh God. And <laughs> it was kind of like, um, uh, I liked how he, I mean, he maintained his American accent. There's a lot of there was a lot of like African like kind of voices or whatever, mm. which is um, obviously like you know good positive movement for film or whatever. But yeah, he was an outsider, and how he kept his uh, or how I guess the character still had that American accent. Yeah, um, kind of emphasized that, and yeah, I think that was like a good sort of director writer choice or whatever. Um, and yeah, he played. He played it really, really well. Um, like you kind of when there's like a face down between like him and T'Challa, it's a bit like you can see these the clash of like cultures and like yeah, everything and yeah. like every single choice they made. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I thought it had it had good action. Um, I suppose it did have a few pacing pacing things here and there, you know. But I feel like the action was good. I think it had a it had a good story. Uh, sticking with the sort of Killmonger thing, I did find it a little bit rushed how he just sort of came to Wakanda and was just like, yeah, look, um, I want to take over. <laughs> um, but, you know, it was something that I could easily look past and it was just like, yeah, you know, he's, he's doing his thing, he's here. He wants to take yeah, the, the well, front. That being said, it was like a two hour, just over two hour long film. Yeah. So, yeah, 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 I mean, they <laughs> yeah you're right. They could have spent a bit more yeah. time look, like kind of slipping him in there. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was it was a really good movie. It was definitely worth waiting for the action. It had a few little comedic moments here and there. Not too much that some of you might get offended because <laughs> you're you know scared of funny movies. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I thought it was I thought it was really good. I thought it was really good. Um, yeah. Do you think you need to have seen previous Marvel films to get this film? No. No, this, this movie stands on its own. It's, it's one of those rare movies that sort of stands on its own in the MCU. Um, yeah, yeah. They managed to do that like quite well with the, the standalone film. Yeah. Like, the team-ups or whatever. Yeah, or the sequels. yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, I think maybe... Uh, I mean, the stuff in Civil War... Where you uh, Black Panther. What, where... Um, with his father. Hmm. Yeah, when you put on this... What, when you, when father dies or when well that and, well yeah like how he kind of I did like got how to the role again set up, like that powerful in Civil War yeah because then it made everybody interested like, who's this guy how come he yeah, yeah yeah I remember like around the time of Civil War because um, Civil War obviously came out like around the same time of um, Batman vs Superman so there was kind of obvious comparisons mm, yeah. um, that people were making which was unfair and you didn't want to make them but it was kind of just you kind of had to um, in your head and I remember yeah Batman vs Superman introduced Wonder Woman and Civil War introduced Black Panther so I was kind of very much looking at both those films or am I going to be interested in their solo films later on um, Batman vs Superman was not interested in Wonder Woman at all <laughs> did not do a good job with her I mean she was like she had the best fight scene but as far as the character goes yeah didn't really know anything about it didn't care thankfully Wonder Woman turned out to be a good film yeah um, 
Civil War, though, yeah, really set up Black Panther really, really well. Mm. And then his follow-up film was amazing. Like, it was only, like, boosted, yeah. like, further by what Civil War did. Yeah. Um, but I was going to say that the... Uh, I think that the like how his father died in Civil War and like how he got to the uh, got to the king was maybe a bit. You, you, some people might not get that just by seeing this film alone. Okay, yeah, yeah. I suppose because it, it yeah. just sort of sort of goes there a bit too quickly, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just, just like yeah. It's kind of like literally like what a twenty second long flashback yeah. or something <laughs> like that, and then. Yeah, and I think that's that's sort of what I mean, like with the. They sort of rush. It's, it's only just over two hours, so they have to speed things up a bit. But yeah, they could have took some time to yeah, set things up a little bit. But um, I want to. Yeah, I would, just, I would just like to say the the, the uh, big shout out to the Dora Milaje. They were <laughs> they, they were like they were my favorite. Like. Now, Danai Gurira's character just like stole the show for me, pretty much. Like her, well, her Shuri and. Um, N- Nakia, is it Nakia? Yeah, Nakia. Yeah. All three of them just kind of stole the show for me. It was just like, yeah, it's a Black Panther movie, but they're here. Like. <laughs> Squad. <laughs> there, there was this. There's, there's a moment with um, Okoye's character when they're in in Korea, and she like starts kicking off and. <laughs> like I, when I was watching that whole scene, I just had like a big smile on my face. Like, <laughs> there's, there's one thing in particular that she does. I'm not gonna go to spoilers. There's one thing in particular she does. And I was just like, yeah, <laughs> this is good. You talking about so, the pole? Huh? With the pole? With the pole? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just all of it. Just all of it. It's, just, yeah. it's really good. It's really good. But um, yeah, no, I love this movie. I love this movie. <laughs> no, costumes were really good. Hmm. Costumes. The costume. Yeah, the costumes were good. Yeah, shout out to costume design. Yeah, and soundtrack. Soundtrack was amazing. Yes, I definitely. love soundtrack. Yeah, there was a lot of big beats, and then there was. Um, I remember there was this one particular moment. Uh, I think it was when Ever like takes over the jet, mm. and um, like in the soundtrack you could hear like there was like pan flutes or something playing, and okay. then it kind of yeah. like just blended into like the kind of traditional or like cinematic Marvel Avengers mm. kind of score or whatever, and it was just like a really nice yeah, yeah, like yeah. transition from like what's supposed to be I guess like you know African into yeah. big action film. Like, oh, <laughs> these guys, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. You know, they know. They know. They know. Um, yeah. Also, like I actually bought the album. This movie, I, I, I haven't bought a CD in years, <laughs> and this, this came out, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm buying that." I gotta turn I'm it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like a original yeah. Kendrick Lamar song, yeah, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's, it's good. Yeah. If, you, if you haven't heard it, go listen to it. Go listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I don't always do this, but I'll do it today. Out of ten. What would you, you do? Not all the time. Not all the time. I don't like doing it, but you know, hey. <laughs> Out of uh, ten, out of ten, what would you rate this movie? I'm gonna give it a nine. A nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. very high nine. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, eight and a quarter. Eight and a quarter. Wow, we're getting to these decimals now. Ish. <laughs> 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 okay. I want to give it a seven. I need to see it again. A seven. All right. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Giving on second view and it could go up or down. Could go up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna. Oh, where, would I, where am I gonna put it? As, as you've thrown in the decimals there, so. <laughs> <laughs> I might say an 8.5. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say about an 8.5. I'm gonna see it again, so maybe my, my score will go up. I can't see it going down, <laughs> so I'll say it will either go up or it will stay at the 8.5. Um, but no, I really enjoyed this movie. Um, definitely go check it out. Yeah. It's it's one to watch. Everyone it's, needs to see this. It's, yeah, if you're a, if you're a Marvel <laughs> MCU fan, you need to see it. If you're a comic book fan, you need to see it. You just want to see some black people, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's good about this film? What's good about this film is that it's not just like a it's not just like a Friday or like a dear white. It's not like a good black film. Yeah, it's yeah. a good film, film altogether. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So obviously on. On Twitter, you know, there's been a big, a big hype train, a big following of the Black Panther movie, and um, you know, obviously, like in America, I think they started this thing where they were trying to get kids from like schools to go to the screenings. They were sort of like getting them oh, sponsorship really? to like oh, get yeah. screenings. Oh yeah, I saw a few of the videos. Oh, that nice. Just, 
to like celebrate him. Yeah, because few of them got it. Yeah, and I, I thought that. Yeah, I thought that was really good. I thought like um, it's a movie that means a lot to to a lot of people. Um, not to everyone, but to a lot of people, it does mean I mean a lot. And obviously, you've got the hashtag "What Black Panther Means to Me." Um, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, which that's I think is really, powerful. yeah, I thought I think it's really powerful. And um, that's, there was this video that came out with um, Ryan Coogler. So I read, I read what he said about him sort of making the Black Panther movie. So he says, um, "This film was a blessing for me because when I realised that I wanted to become a filmmaker." I knew that I wanted to make movies that were personal and stories that I feel like I could tell the best, using the things that made me unique as a person. But I also grew up with a healthy love of pop culture, like any kid that was born in the 80s came up in the 90s. I loved video games, loved comic books, loved comic book cartoons, and I always had an aching for characters that looked like me. And not just one character, but for worlds that looked like my world, growing up in the East Bay area. You love Spider-Man and you love X-Men, you love everything the same, but you do long to buy a toy that looks like you, looks like your family, looks like your friends. And so for me as a filmmaker, this film was a gift and hopefully when we show, it, show the film to the world, we'll be able to see some kids that were like us getting access to something that we never had. I think that was, that was quite, you know, it was quite a powerful statement, you know, because yeah, like, yeah. I do remember growing up in the 80s and, you know, I remember my uncle actually had a, um, he had a Lando Calrissian um, <laughs> little toy, and like that was like the only that I can remember. That was like the only black figure toy figure that we had. And I remember just thinking about it like recently when I sort of like read this statement. I was thinking I remember that toy being sort of special because he was black, and he was like the only black figure that like to action figure that I had yeah. at the time. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, like for me. You know, this this movie, what's good about this movie? It's a movie that's about, you know, black characters in Africa. And it's not about slavery. It's not about oppression. It's not about violence, drugs, people being in prison. Um, it is a comic book movie, but at the same time, there's a positive feel behind it. It's like a celebration of African culture. Obviously, it's a made up nation. It's a comic book movie, but the, rep the representation is still powerful. And, um, the response to it has been amazing. You know, seeing kids dressed up, you know, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, <laughs> whoever, you know, whoever they are, they're dressed up, um, male, female, you know, they're dressed up as Black Panther characters, dressed up as Shuri. Yeah. You know. yeah. <laughs> um, With the same kind of like ease or normal normality as like a Superman or a yeah, Spider-Man. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And I think, I think like, that's, that's a really, it's a really po pow powerful and positive message i think yeah. that this movie is sort of putting out there i mean it's um it's just a massively good thing that uh yeah like sort of little black boys little black girls have the ability to look at their tv mm. and see a character that yeah looks like them with as much like yeah kind of normality as you know a little white boy a little black a little white girl would look at yeah superman or supergirl or something like yeah, that like yeah. they've got that option now yeah. like you know you obviously want like more representation so it becomes more of an equal playing field but yeah there's like something out there that they can look at and see and like feel that they can become a superhero because like you know before this like the most popular black superhero was like chris tucker and rush hour like, <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's no options <laughs> really like you know yeah lando calrissian or like static shock in 2004 2003 or whatever like those are your choices. Yeah, yeah. Now there's one more added to the pantheon. Yeah. And luckily, yeah, this film has been amazing. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. I mean, you know, I, I suppose you'll get the argument that um, people always throw out there, which is, yeah, we had Blade and we had Spawn and meet him and we didn't talk about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, kids didn't have access to those movies. They didn't have access to Blade. They didn't have access to Spawn because those are more adult orientated comic book movies, they're more violent, they were, you know, they didn't have yeah. that sort of positive message that I think movies like Black Panther does. Mm. Um, Speaking about Blade quickly, mm. did you hear that like Black Panther was um, was a Wesley Snipes project? I, I did hear that, yeah. For I a long, long time. Or something, didn't yeah, you? yeah, <laughs> he tried to get a couple of scripts like pushed through yeah. like Marvel or whatever since like 1992 or something like that. <laughs> 
Um, and someone along the line was like, you know, you can't be both Blade and Black <laughs> Panther at the same time. <laughs> that would have been overload. Yeah. yeah. Imagine if growing up, your one role model was Wesley Snipes. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people it was in the night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, what what does... You know, what, does it does it have that sort of what does what does it mean to you? Like, does it have that sort of similar feel for you? Think about it because you were saying about like what the like toys and stuff grew up mm. with. I don't think that probably had much any. toys or yeah. any like the black role models yeah. or stuff. But yeah, it was like mini cartoons, like like you say, it's like short. Mm. Uh, Justice League with um, Green Lantern. Okay. But having like a superhero film live action and have it like on the big screen with everybody worldwide and, and it's really good. It's, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, what do you. And I, yeah, go on. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something, but I'll let you, I'll let you go. No, no. <laughs> I was just thinking about, um, yeah, how like representation is important because, like, if I wanna, if I wanted to cosplay before or like just dress up as somebody, it wouldn't be as easy. Like, I could dress up as anyone, but I would want. It's nice to have somebody who I can look like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. Like, oh, to have an accurate costume. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. I mean, let, let's not forget, you know, Disney owned Marvel. So technically, if you think about it, Shuri being a princess <laughs> is actually a Disney princess <laughs> who can not only fight, but she's actually one of the most smarter people in the MCU. Is she smarter than Tony Stark? Pretty much. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god, that scene she's is coming, much, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. She's pretty much more smart than yeah. <laughs> When she tells Tony Stark like how to actually run a robot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh god, that's happening. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I think, you know, for, for little girl, and, and obviously, again, you know, with Dora Milaje, you know, they, <laughs> they are, they are. Check his Twitter, it's nothing but fan art, you know, <laughs> <laughs> nothing but fan art, it's all him. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just positive, positivity after positivity, just great messages out there, really. Yeah. And I cannot stress enough just how good it is that it's, it needs to be normal. Like, yeah. like just have a just having a black just having a superhero of any race and colour mm. or whatever it just needs to be like not a because race doesn't need to be uh, an issue until you make exactly. it like something yeah. that you focus on yeah. and make it something that you intentionally choose to have or to omit yeah. and if you just like if like a film like Black Panther is successful um, then that makes yeah the idea of a black superhero like commercially like acceptable mm. it's a commercially yeah. viable which means we can have more of this yeah um and because I think like, yeah, most of the reason why films like this don't get made is because they think, oh, we'll only appeal to a certain audience. Yeah, exactly. And if we only like, you know, like uh, shrink our profits by this much, then yeah, we're not going to get our returns back. But like, like what Wonder Woman did for women, yeah. like, you know, a female orientated, like a, or a female led um, film. Like, yeah, that can be successful. Deadpool did it with R-rated films, like an R-rated yep. film can be successful. Yeah. A film that happens to have a black cast. Mm can also be successful yeah, exactly these options are like available to us and it just needs to be like a normal standard practice that we can also look at all these avenues for entertainment exactly it's not not just not just comic book movies but just movies in general yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah and I, and, I, and I you know I, I don't want it to sound like i'm saying you know I, I i grew up i grew up with superman as a as a hero that i looked up to and for kids kids of any color can still look up to to Superman or yeah, to any, yeah. to, you know, they don't have to be <laughs> black or white or Hispanic. You can still look up to a hero as a positive role model. But, um, and I'm not going to go into spoilers again, but there's a scene at the end of Black Panther and it sort of cements exactly what, I, what I'm sort of, what I feel. It's like, you know, little, little black kids around the world will go and watch this movie and they'll sort of look up to this person as a yeah. king and a superhero. And it's like, well, he's black. He can be a king and he can be a superhero. I can be, I can be up there as well. Maybe yeah. not a king, but obviously, you know. 
But you know, you <laughs> but, <laughs> well, I mean, if there's a little white boy, the look. <laughs> yeah, you could be a king in your own. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you I feel mean, like that. if there's a little white boy out there that feels like they can look at George Bush and say, "I can be a C grade student and be president," <laughs> there should also be the yeah. opportunity for a little black boy <laughs> to think I can be king one day. Yeah, you'd be the king of your own household, right? You'd be the king. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, it's. I just think it has it has very very strong positive messages, and I think. Go take your kids to go and see this movie. Yeah. You know, um, if you're a grown ass person, go and see this movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, because yeah, it's 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 powerful. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's our take on Black Panther and what Black Panther means to us. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button. Leave your comments below if you uh, if you've seen the movie. Let us know what you thought of it, and um, we'll see you next time. for like the 20 seconds like <laughs> <laughs> hold <it. laughs>